So alopecia areata within itself is an autoimmune disorder, right? Hey baddies, so I'm doing all this in a day. Um, I'm taking the opportunity to talk about alopecia, AKA hair loss, right? Alopecia within itself is an umbrella term for hair loss. And I am using this opportunity to talk about different forms of alopecia and there are then more, but I'm just gonna talk about kind of like the overarching forms of alopecia. Um, maybe you can see yourself under this microscope, this lens, maybe you can relate. I will always recommend that you go see a dermatologist, get a scalp eval and actually a confirmed diagnosis, right? We're not here to diagnose ourselves, but you know, it does help to be able to self identify or self assess. And so, um, let's just jump right into the video and talk about some of the different forms of alopecia. Okay. So I wanted to do this and then I think I'll start to break each one of them down individually as we continue to go in individual videos so that I can show you how to effectively treat that specific form. But this is kind of like a general introduction to alopecia and the different forms, okay? And to let you know that uh, for the record, if you're losing hair, um, if for the most part you are shedding, thinning, um, hair is breaking, you're seeing bald spots, yeah, that's alopecia. It is. Don't think that alopecia is in its extreme form, Jada Pickett Smith, which is what we all think of when we hear the term alopecia now. She has become synonymous with alopecia, but that is just one form, that is one extreme severe form of alopecia. That is not what kind of like the majority of us deal with. And so what we do is we basically, it goes untreated, we ignore it, right? We think, oh, just my hair is falling out, it'll come back. Uh, keep playing, eventually it won't come back. That's how it works, that's how it starts. Um, that's your follicle screaming for help, it's crying, it's telling you that it's dying, it's suffocating. And if you don't do something to treat it, um, unfortunately, your follicle will die, um, resulting in permanent baldness, permanent scarring in most people, okay? So, hey baddies, it's your girl Bevy with Hair Scripts and I have some great news. If you are experiencing hair loss, meaning it's shedding, it's thinning, you have bald spots, it's breaking, you don't know what the problem is and you don't know how to treat it and how to fix it, do me a favor and go to thehairscripts.com, go to our website, the link is down below, and use our scalp evaluation tool where you can upload up to six photos of your scalp and your problem area. And one of our hair scripts, hair loss experts will get back to you, not only with a full evaluation, but a treatment plan on how you can personally regrow your hair back based on your hair growth concerns. But that's not all. You'll also get product recommendations that are going to be better for you and not for your neighbor. Okay, so personalized hair care, girl, that's where it's at. And if that's not good and that's not reason enough for you to go, it's free, okay? Don't say and tell you. Bye. Let me bring some joy back into this um, and let's go right into it. So. The first one is androgenic or androgenetic. Um, you'll hear it called androgenic or androgenetic. They're both the same alopecia, AKA male pattern baldness or male pattern hair loss, also female pattern hair loss. Um, and so this is what I was diagnosed with. This is one of the most common forms of hair loss in the world. Um, and it affects both men and women. This type of hair loss, you know, includes symptoms of a receding hairline, thinning, and you're gonna see hairline in either the crown or the hairline or both, right? Now, keep in mind, there's no cure, right? Which means that if you're experiencing this form of hair loss, you just don't magically make it go away. But if you start treating it early or you start treating it, then you can basically slow down the progression of hair loss. You can maintain the hair that you have on your head, right? So if you're trying to go back to your glory days and get back to where you were before androgenetic alopecia, give it up, right? But what you can do is you can definitely maintain the hair on your head you can proliferate your follicles meaning create more follicles and you can allow you can thicken your hair get denser fuller hair even with androgenetic alopecia now i'm not going to go too much in details um here but you know some things that doctors may prescribe is something called finasteride um minoxidil 
And then there's a whole bunch of other treat like cosmetic procedures like PRP, um, that's platelet rich plasma, um, or my favorite, the um, steroid injections on the scalp to help you with your androgenetic alopecia. Keep in mind that once you have androgenetic or androgenic alopecia, AKA hormonal hair loss, it's an ongoing battle for the rest of your life, okay? So for those of you who don't wanna be dependent on anything, well, I mean, it's one of those things that this isn't, it's an ongoing battle, right? But there is, there are so many strategies, so many alternatives, and I will create videos specific to each form of alopecia and what you can um, do to treat that form of alopecia. The next one is another common form called alopecia areata. Okay, so alopecia areata causes hair to fall out in patches in an unpredictable pattern is caused by your immune system mistakenly attacking your hair follicles, okay? Again, there's no cure for this one either, but there are several treatments also including minoxidil. Um, there are oral immunosuppressants, um, topical steroids, steroid injections, which I talk about here all which reduces inflammation to the follicles. So let me just talk really quickly about an immunosuppressant. So an immunosuppressant, so let's let's stop. Let's go back. So alopecia areata within itself is an autoimmune disorder, right? It's when your immune system is attacking the hair follicles for whatever reason, maybe it thinks it's an antigen in the body, it's attacking the hair follicle. So what people do is, not people, but what these treatments do or providers may do is they might prescribe something that's called an immunosuppressant to suppress the immune system from doing what it's supposed to do, right? So it's stopping the immune system from attacking the hair follicle, which can help with hair growth. The problem with that is it's an immunosuppressant, right? It's stopping the immune system from doing what it has to do, right? It's stopping the immune system from immune systeming, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, um, you know, you know, you're, you're trying to save your hair follicles, but you're, you're damaging or you're kind of like, um, you're suppressing your immune system in the, in the interim. So you have to choose your battles, right? Good and evil. Uh, recently the FDA just approved the first and only drug. Um, it's, it's a class of drugs called Jack inhibitors, which I have a whole video on that immunosuppressant as well. That is going to basically, it's like a miracle drug. It works wonders for alopecia areata, okay? Because it is suppressing the immune system in its in the most extreme way so that it's no longer attacking the hair follicle and your hair can regrow, okay? I have a video on that. I'm not gonna go into details here, but I just wanted to touch on that. Um, but you have to see, you have to determine with you and your doctor if the benefit outweighs the risk, okay? Um, that's all I'm finna say about that. So the next one is alopecia totalis. So alopecia totalis is what happens if alopecia areata is not treated, right? Basically that's when all of the hair on the scalp either quickly or slowly falls out. So that let's, so, you know, that's a good example of maybe Jada Pickett Smith, right? So alopecia areata, you may see just one, like you might see patches of hair loss here and there. You might lift this up and boop is gone. You might lift this up and boop is gone. You might look throughout the head and the scalp and notice little spots. But if you don't do anything about it and you think that you're just gonna pray the spot away um, and it's gonna come back the hair, it can, it will, but eventually, if untreated, like I just mentioned in the beginning of this video, um, then it can just, all of it can just fall out, right? And in some cases it's progressively fall out where you, you lose maybe 80, 90 or more percent of your hair, or it could literally just fall out, right? There's no rhyme or reason. And that's because the immune system is attacking the hair follicle, okay? So that's alopecia totalis. Now the next one, which is very similar, but there are small uh, differences, which we're about to talk about right now, is alopecia universalis. Alopecia universalis is very rare. Um, it's a very rare and advanced form of alopecia. Um, again, if alopecia areata goes untreated, it can result in alopecia universalis, which causes all of the hair on your body to fall out, okay? Including your eyelashes. So that is the main difference. So alopecia totalis is when it's just on the scalp, right? You just see basically a clean scalp, right? For the most part, um, if it's alopecia areata untreated. Alopecia universalis is a little more rare. It's not as um, common, right, as alopecia areata, 
but it's universalis, meaning your immune system is attacking all the hairs all over your entire body. It's attacking all the follicles. And now that's when you see people that are not only bald, but they don't have eyelashes, eyebrows, pubic hairs, mustache, beards. They're clean, okay? Um, that is alopecia universalis. And again, the difference with alopecia totalis is that you'll still see eyebrows, lashes, etc. okay? Now, another one that's very common, especially in the black and brown communities, is cicatricial alopecia, AKA CCCA, okay? CCCA. This one is very common. Cicatricial alopecia is a form of hair loss that leaves scars under the surface of the skin due to the hair follicles being destroyed by inflammation. Now, this one is, before I even continue, this one is a little bit um, controversial because it, you go back and forth between some people being, some people saying that CCCA or cicatricial alopecia is caused by our own doing, you know, obviously aggressive hairstyling, ponytails, braids, I mean, just man over manipulation um, that has just caused inflammation over the years. The hair, the follicles are just done, destroyed, right? That is um, what some people say is the common cause of CCCA, especially in the African American, black, brown communities, how we over manipulate our hair. But um, there's even more information that shows that CCCA is more of a genetic predisposition, meaning that you didn't have to do anything to your hair. If you were anything like me, you don't know how to style your hair anyway, okay? It just sits on your head. Um, and you unfortunately can still not be a victim, but you can still suffer from CCCA, which is um, a scarring form of alopecia um, that again, cannot be reversed. The thing with CCCA is, and alopecias can be broken down into two subcategories. There's scarring alopecia and non-scarring. Non-scarring meaning that it's a temporary, it can be temporary, it can be transitional, meaning that you can treat this alopecia. You can sustain the hairs on your head. You can slow down the progression of hair loss. You can still have thick, full, dense hair. You can still fill in the spots because the hair follicles for the most part are not scarred. They're not dead. You still have thriving follicles even if you don't have thriving hair. Scarring alopecia, unfortunately, is when the follicles are just dead, sis. Or, or bruh, you know what I mean? Because I have men and women watching my video. So it's when the, the follicles are just completely dead, they're scarred. There ain't another hair gonna peep through from there, you, okay? Usually, by the time it's fully dead, that's when you see the shininess. You don't see kind of like the rigidness that you normally would see because you could still have a little bit of hair popping up. It is shiny. When it's shiny, the follicles are dead and, you know, for the most part, never to come back. People are still, researchers are still trying to, you know, conduct studies to see if there is still a way to really fight for scarring alopecia. Um, CCCA is one of them. There is a study, and I'm not gonna go too much in details about metformin. Metformin is a treatment typically used um, to treat type two diabetes. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the details of the mechanism of action and how it works, but somehow because of its MOA, mechanism of action, it can help with treating um, CCCA, okay? Now, these studies are very early and it's not done in too many people to say that we found our goat, right? Um, or our holy grail. But there are still researchers that are trying to find something to help people with more scarring alopecias, okay? Um, anyway, going back to CCCA, again, it cannot be reversed. And in some cases, not really even treated, especially if it's not really caught early but you can always do things to try your best to not have it look so extreme right so severe and again i'll have a whole video on ccca because that one is very common especially in the black and brown communities and there is still a lot of debate on whether or not it is self-inflicted alopecia because of the over manipulation of hairstyles that has over time destroyed our hair follicles or if it's just because we're genetically predisposed and there's nothing that could be done anyway, all right? So we're gonna talk about that one in detail in a separate video. The next one is called postpartum alopecia. So like I just mentioned, you know, there's alopecias that are permanent, scarring, um, more severe, and there are others that are transient, AKA they're more temporary, right, in nature. 
postpartum is exactly what it sounds like postpartum hair loss postpartum alopecia is postpartum hair loss we've all been there at some state some point or another maybe if you have multiple children one child may have caused it more than the other although technically the child themselves don't cause it but you know what i mean right so postpartum alopecia is a type of hair loss that occurs about two to three months after you give birth um it's caused by hormonal shifts obviously in the body and um after some time your hormone levels will kind of normalize and then your hair should grow back but there's so much to say about postpartum alopecia and or postpartum hair loss and i think i have current videos already on this channel about it but i'm going to create some more up-to-date videos even with more newer science that's out there about postpartum hair loss because even though um the key to hair growth when you're pregnant is the activation of the antigen phase and remaining in that antigen phase which is the hair growth phase for a very long extended period of time right that's because the hormones that are active um, and activated during pregnancy are really favorable for kind of kicking you into that antigen phase and keeping you there but then what happens is after you give birth to that baby those hormones kind of re recalibrate reshift back to the, its normal self and then it just kind of speeds up the other cycles which is the shedding cycle etc so essentially what you're doing is you're shedding hair very very quickly but there is still debate about whether or not you can salvage what you've gotten from that baby or whether you just lose it indefinitely but i'm not going to touch on that in this video i'm going to have another video about postpartum alopecia and lastly just like ccca cicatricial alopecia one of the most common that we all know about in the black and brown communities is called traction alopecia okay traction alopecia is when your edges is falling out your edges is receding hairline gone everything drop bop 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 they say your, your baby pulled out your edges that is traction alopecia and just like ccca we are predis there is debate about whether we're predisposed to it, which in some cases we are, a lot of cases, and in others it's self-inflicted, right? So I'm not gonna say too much about this one because I'm gonna do a whole video on traction alopecia, but just know it results, like I said, in a receding hairline, hair loss around the temples, caused by tight hairstyles, especially braids, and the treatment for this can vary depending on how long you've waited to treat it. The good thing about this one is it can be non-scarring, but it can also be scarring, right? So if you sit on your hair loss, sis, if you sit around and try to slather a whole bunch of oil and mayonnaise and eggs and whatever on your scalp, hoping to grow your um, hair back, you are doing yourself a major disservice because what's gonna happen is it's not treating anything. Your hair was probably originally gonna grow back anyway because it was just one of those, it, it was just starting, right? It was the onset of traction alopecia. So you keep doing the same things every time your hair recedes thinking it's gonna, you're gonna get the same results. And then unfortunately one day it, it just won't come back until it's just white clean. Traction alopecia is a big one. It's one of the most common ones I hear about. And it's one of the ones that can be treated with the hair scripts medicated growth serums. So please go down in the link below, leave your information so that we can let you know as soon as we launch. But um, yeah, let's let's get our edges back, let's get our hair back, let's thicken our hair, let's be those baddies that we know that we deserve to be. All right, subscribe, like, 